Today, we'll be taking a look at the absolutely brutal process of creating space marines in the Warhammer universe, breaking down every phase that makes these superhumans the defenders of humankind. So if you want to find out how these power armor clad super chads earn the nickname Angel of Death, feel free to stick around. And if you enjoy the content, please make sure to leave a like and subscribe. Every little bit counts to helping the community grow, and I really do appreciate every last one of you. Thank you. Before we jump into it and start breaking down each step in creating a Space Marine, we first have to talk about what a Space Marine is exactly. Space Marines, also known as Adeptus Astardes, roughly meaning those who conquer the stars, he who holds the stars, or even masters of the stars, are considered the absolute elite among humanity's defenders, their skills as warriors unmatched by very few. Due to the drastic measures taken in the genetic modification and psycho-conditioning process, some might say these beings are no longer human at all, and when compared to a normal human, you would completely understand this sentiment. Additionally, each space marine belongs to an organizational unit called a chapter, which provides structure and the basis of their existence, with each chapter serving its own unique role. One of the most identifying features of a space marine is their power armor, which takes decades just to forge a single set. This highly sophisticated armor is fully integrated into the Space Marine and offers many benefits to the user. These include reinforced fibers to increase the already modified wearer's strength, auto sensors, thought activated systems, and many life support functions that include pain suppressors, combat stimulants, and anti-venoms, just to name a few. In addition to the benefits of wearing power armor, the Space Marine has been genetically modified to be impervious to all natural disease and can sustain wounds any normal human would be obliterated by. All of this has created a warrior who does not know the meaning of fear and why many consider them to be the Emperor's Angels of Death. Because they are leaps and bounds physically stronger and more resilient than that of normal beings, Space Marines often find themselves mentally distanced from the rest of humanity. When interacting with a Space Marine, many normal humans are overcome with awe and sometimes even outright fear. And some cultures on the more primitive worlds have even been observed worshipping the Space Marines as literal demigods. And in kind, many Space Marines view ordinary humans with little empathy, considering them as mere mortals compared to their own superior existence. This perspective is sometimes even adopted by entire chapters, which see humans as frail and prone to temptation, greed, lust, and cowardice, emotions they rarely if ever experience. This thinking has caused many space marines to be swayed away from humanity and a darker pursuit to worship and serve the chaos gods. These traitors of the Imperium are often referred to as chaos space marines and have been completely corrupted. Yet thankfully, most space marines remember their purpose as protectors of humanity. This doesn't mean space marines were ever intended to lead humanity, and this was never their purpose, as their sole mission is dedicated to the defense of humanity even if it means defending humanity from itself. And at its core, this duty is rooted in the compassion the Emperor had for humanity. But some Space Marines consider compassion as a weakness that must be purged, but it's the wisest among them that understand compassion is the only way humanity can reach salvation. In most cases, potential Space Marines are often recruited from the worlds where a chapter has its fortress monastery, though some chapters draw recruits from multiple worlds within their protected space. Recruitment methods vary. Some select from feral tribes on harsh worlds, others from eager volunteers groomed from birth, and some even kidnap potential warriors, transforming them into space marines regardless of their will. No matter how a chapter goes about picking up potential recruits, all candidates must undergo grueling initiation processes to determine their worthiness for genetic modification, with each chapter having their own twist. Once an individual becomes a space marine, they are forever changed. After their body has been modified, they are no longer mortal and therefore must stand apart from the people they once knew, sworn to protect all of mankind because their genetic heritage is now considered that of the Emperor himself. The origins of the Space Marine can be dated back thousands of years ago when the Emperor commanded legions of Thunder Warriors. These were something of a prototype to the modern day Space Marines, physically stronger and much larger than modern Space Marines to the point they could shatter a Space Marine's skull with a single headbutt. Thunder Warriors too were the product of genetic modification. The problem was that these modifications made these warriors extremely unstable. This showed itself via mental and physical means, members quickly dying out due to their own body turning on them. Unlike Space Marines, Thunder Warriors enjoyed the violence and often only embraced the savage side of humanity. 
This can be directly attributed to the fact that they still maintain human emotions unlike future space marines. They were simply a means to an end and never the permanent solution for humanity's defense, as all they knew how to do was conquer. After the fall of the Thunder Warriors, the Emperor created what would essentially be his quote-unquote sons and the future progenitors of the Space Marines. These Primarchs were comprised of 20 superhuman beings and their genetic material carries on to this day with the creation of the Space Marines. Based off recent lore, it might have been 21 Primarchs, but it gets confusing, so we'll stick with 20 for simplicity's sake. If I ever make a video going into detail on the Primarchs, perhaps we can dig a little bit deeper. Anyways, the exact process of their creation is unknown, but the basis of their creation relied directly on the Emperor's own genetic material. The second known stage in this process involved further genetic material, each differentiating among the Primarchs, giving each Primarch their own unique genome. And in turn, the genome of the Primarchs is carried over into the Space Marines. And this is what is referred to as a gene seed. A gene seed is a vital component in the creation and maintenance of Space Marines. It is a set of genetic materials that allows the implantation and growth of specialized organs known as the gene seed organs within a Space Marine recruit. These organs are what grant Space Marines their superhuman abilities. And as mentioned earlier, each chapter's gene seed is derived from the genetic material of one of these original Primarchs. Due to this, each chapter can trace back different traits and abilities back to a specific Primarch. On top of each Primarch having different gene seeds, over time, gene seeds can even be mutated and lost due to accident or other means within a chapter. Therefore, it's rare for a chapter to possess all 19 varieties of gene seed implants. This also means some chapters will have variations in abilities due to these mutations and changes within a gene seed. For the sake of entertainment though, we're going to discuss all 19 gene seed implants along with some of the more unique variations and flaws found within the chapters. So to sum it up, the Emperor passes genes down to each Primarch, made individual tweaks in each Primarch's genetic code, and then these individuals pass their unique gene codes to the Space Marine chapters. However, there is one exception, and that being the Grey Knights. These were highly mysterious Space Marines who received their gene seed directly from the Emperor's genome, thus not having a Primarch from which they originate. This has resulted in a chapter that is highly resilient to corruption and the added ability of psychers are otherwise known as an individual who can utilize psychic abilities. It makes sense the Emperor would create this chapter as he did, being their primary duties are the extermination of demons, and only those of pure heart and soul would be powerful enough to resist corruption. Due to their purity and stable gene seed, they are one of the few space marines able to take on all 19 implants. But they're not the only ones, another being the Ultramarines. These are considered the purest of space marines and the figurehead of the Emperor's forces with some detractors saying they like the smell of their own farts. And lastly, the Dark Angels, whose claim to fame is being the first of the Emperor's Space Marine Legions. Now it's time to get to the juicy bits and talk about each of the genetic implants in the Space Marine creation process. The Secondary Heart, also known as the Maintainer, is the first and easiest of the 19 gene seed organ implants a Space Marine neophyte gets on his journey to becoming a full Space Marine. It looks like a smaller version of the human heart and is placed in the chest cavity hooked up to the neophyte's circulatory and pulmonary systems near the original heart. The main job of this secondary heart is to boost the Space Marine's performance by increasing blood flow, delivering more oxygen and nutrients to the muscles, way more than even the fittest human could manage. This extra heart is extremely important because if Space Marine were to take damage to their primary heart, this can buy them enough time to seek medical attention. The Asmodola, or Iron Heart, is the second gene seed organ a Space Marine neophyte gets. This implant is surgically placed next to the neophyte's pituitary gland at the base of the brain, secreting a specially engineered form of human growth hormone. When combined with a diet rich in microscopic ceramic-based minerals, this hormone stimulates rapid growth in the space marine's skeletal and muscular systems, giving them their superhuman strength and massive size compared to a regular human, typically reaching a height of about 7 to 7.5 feet or 2.1 to 2.3 meters with a proportionate amount of skeletal and muscular mass. During this period, the rib cage fuses into a solid mass of bulletproof interlaced bone plates. This new structure offers unparalleled protection in the Space Marine's organs, far beyond what a normal human skeleton could ever withstand. The only downside is that this enhancement also makes it more challenging for the chapter's apothecaries to perform surgeries on a Space Marine's body cavity. Notably, 
the black dragons have a mutation in their osmodola which causes bony growths that can also be used as melee weapons. The Biscopia, also known as the Forge of Strength, is the third gene seed organ implanted in a Space Marine neophyte. This organ significantly enhances a Space Marine's combat abilities and survivability, pushing them to superhuman levels once they become a full Space Marine. The Biscopia is a small, roughly spherical organ implanted into the chest cavity. Like the Osmodola, its primary function is hormonal. The presence of the Biscopia stimulates muscle growth throughout the body, greatly increasing a Space Marine's physical strength. This organ can be implanted at the same time as the first two, typically when the neophyte is between 10 and 12 standard years old. So essentially, the organ's pumping steroids into the neophyte's body. Behemoth stamen, also known as the blood maker, is the fourth gene seed organ a Space Marine receives. It's implanted into a major blood vessel like the aorta or the femoral artery. The hemostamen alters the biochemical composition of a Space Marine's blood, allowing it to carry oxygen and nutrients more efficiently. This change makes a Space Marine's blood a brighter red than that of a normal human due to its greatly increased oxygen carrying capacity. Additionally, the hemostamen helps regulate the actions of the second and third gene seed implants. The Lehrman's organ, also known as the healer, is the fifth gene seed organ. It's shaped like a human liver, but only the size of a golf ball and is placed within the chest cavity. This organ produces synthetic, biological cells known as Laramin cells, named after one of the researchers in the Emperor's gene laboratories. These cells serve the same purpose as platelets in a human body, but they work much faster and more efficiently. So when a space marine is wounded, Laramin cells are released into the bloodstream and attached to white blood cells. At the injury site, they form scar tissue almost instantly, preventing massive blood loss and infection. This rapid healing is one of the reasons space marines are nearly invincible and so difficult to kill, even when they suffer terrible wounds. The catalapsian node, also known as the unsleeping, is the sixth gene seed organ. Implanted into the back of the cerebrum, just above the brainstem, this organ activates when the space marine is deprived of sleep for an extended period. It detects a rise in stress and fatigue hormones and allows the space marine to switch off sections of the brain sequentially while staying awake and alert, much like how a bottlenose dolphin does. This ability doesn't come without drawbacks though. Prolonged use can be hazardous, potentially causing hallucinations or even psychosis. Despite the advantage this ability provides, even Space Marines need actual rest. The longest recorded period a Space Marine has stayed on active combat duty without rest is 328 solar hours, which was achieved by a squad of the Crimson Fist's kill team during a long and bloody battle with orcs. The Preomner, also known as the Neutralizer, is the seventh gene seed organ. It's essentially a second stomach added to the human digestive system above the original stomach. This organ allows space marines to consume otherwise poisonous or completely indigestible materials. The preomner can biochemically analyze ingested substances and neutralize most known toxins, both biochemical and inorganic, as well as many unknown toxins that a space marine can later vomit up. Often, these extracted toxins are rerouted and stored in the Betcher's gland for future use by the space marines. This implant will be discussed at a later phase. The Amophagia is the eighth gene seed organ, and it's located in the spinal cord and wired into the central nervous system, connecting directly to the cerebral cortex and stomach. It allows the space marine to gain part of a person or creature's memory by consuming their flesh. The Amophagia is designed to absorb information, DNA, RNA, and protein sequences related to memory or experience. This enables a space marine to literally learn by eating. Four new nerve bundles connect the spine and stomach wall transmitting the absorbed information to the brain as memories or experiences. This allows the space marine to gain survival or tactical information by consuming an animal indigenous to an alien world and experiencing some of what the creature did before its death. The presence of this organ explains the flesh eating and blood drinking rituals of certain space marine chapters. For instance, the blood angels contain a genetic flaw in their prime arx gene seed they refer to as the red thirst. Although they don't have a nutritional need for blood, they must consume blood or else they will grow weaker and begin to age. To satisfy this, they typically will carry bottled blood into battle, although blood from a living human is much more satisfying for them. Another potential flaw in Blood Angel's gene seed that not all members will suffer is what's called the Black Rage. Those afflicted will go insane during battle, unable to differentiate between friend or foe. Many who succumb to this will be reassigned to the Death Company, going on suicide missions so they can have an honorable death in combat. The multi-lung, also known as the imbiber, is the ninth gene seed organ. This third lung is integrated into the Space Marine's pulmonary and circulatory systems, 
allowing them to absorb oxygen even in environments with very low oxygen levels that would be unbreathable for normal humans. Breathing with the multi-lung involves a connection implanted into the trachea, enabling all three lungs to operate at full capacity. In toxic environments, a similar muscle closes off the normal lungs, allowing the multi-lung to exclusively absorb oxygen while filtering out poisonous or toxic elements. The oculobe, or the eye of vengeance, is the 10th gene seed organ. This implant is positioned at the base of the brain, connected to the optic nerve and retina. It provides hormonal and genetic stimuli that enables a space marine's eyes to respond to the optic therapy all neophytes undergo. The result is that the space marine can see in low light conditions and near darkness almost as well as they can in bright daylight. The Lyman's ear, also known as the sentinel, is the 11th gene seed organ. This implant not only makes a space marine immune to dizziness or motion sickness with its improved inner ear structure, but it also allows them to consciously filter and enhance certain sounds far beyond normal hearing. The Lyman's ear completely replaces one of the space marine's original ears, but it looks just like a normal ear in size and shape. The Sussan membrane, or hibernator, is the 12th gene seed organ. Initially implanted within a neophyte cerebrum, this implant eventually merges with the entire brain, becoming a full part of the neural architecture. The organ's functions are ineffective without follow-up chemical therapy and training from the chapter's apothecaries, but with sufficient practice and instruction, a space marine can use this implant to enter a state of suspended animation. This can be done consciously or as an automatic reaction to extreme trauma, keeping the space marine alive for years, even after sustaining mortal wounds. The longest recorded period spent in suspended animation was by a member of the Dark Angels chapter, who was revived after 567 years. The melanochrome, also known as the skin shield, is the 13th gene seed organ. This hormonal implant is connected to the lymphatic system and regulates the amount of melanin in a space marine's skin. When exposed to high levels of sunlight, the space marine's skin will naturally darken to protect against the radiation. Different levels of radiation cause variations in skin color among different chapters due to the mutations in the melanochrome organ's gene seed. For example, the Blood Angels and their successor chapters often have unusually pale skin, while the Salamanders have dark black skin and red eyes. The oolitic kidney, also known as the purifier, is the 14th implant. Positioned in the abdominal cavity, this organ becomes part of the Space Marine's filtering system. Serving as an emergency detoxification unit, it enables a Space Marine to survive exposure to poisons, toxins, and gases that are too potent for the immune system to handle alone. Only problem is that when this detox process kicks in, it renders the space marines unconscious, which can be an issue in the middle of combat. The neuroglottis, also known as the devourer, is gene seed organ number 15. Implanted within the upper nasal passages, this organ allows a space marine to biochemically test any substance they chew, taste, or smell for toxicity and nutritional content. Essentially, it helps determine if something is edible or poisonous. In addition to this, the neuroglottis enhances the space marine's sense of smell to the level of a highly trained tracking dog, enabling them to identify even the subtlest odors. This ability is so refined that a space marine can track their target by smell or taste alone. A chapter with an even more refined sense of smell due to the mutations in their gene seed are the space wolves. They also have other animalistic abilities like superior hearing as well as elongated fangs, shaggy hair, and pale yellow eyes. One of the downsides, though, is that this gene seed carries the risk of transforming these space marines into feral man-wolf hybrids called the wolfen. So basically werewolves, kinda. The mucronoid, also known as the weaver, is a 16th gene seed implanted within the central nervous system. This organ responds to specific chemical stimuli in the environment. When activated, it causes the space marine to secrete a waxy, mucus-like protein through their pores, sealing their skin. The mucronoid can only be activated through an external chemical treatment, usually self-administered by the space marine. This process cocoons them, protecting them during suspended animation and shielding them from the vacuum of space and extreme temperatures, especially in frigid environments. And then we have the Betcher's gland, or the poisonous bite. It is the 17th gene seed organ, and it consists of two glands implanted in various locations inside the mouth, including the inside of the lower lip the salivary glands, and the hard palate. These glands work together to transform the space marine's saliva into a corrosive acid when consciously triggered. 
This allows a space marine to spit a wad of acid capable of blinding, wounding, or even killing an enemy. But more commonly, these glands help with digesting difficult or normally indigestible substances like cellulose. In some gene seed lines, such as that of the imperial fists, this organ is atrophied and is no longer as effective or has ceased to function entirely. The progenoid gland, and possibly the most important implant, is the 18th organ implanted in a space marine. Each space marine has a pair of these glands, one in the neck and another in the chest. These organs respond to the presence of the other space marine's gene seed implants by producing germ cells with DNA identical to those implants through a process similar to cellular mitosis. These germ cells grow and are stored in the progenoid organs, much like sperm or egg cells in the human body. When cultured by the chapter's apothecaries, these germ cells can develop into each of the 19 gene seed organs needed to create a new space marine. For most space marines, the progenoid glands are their only means of reproduction, though the DNA passed on is that of their primarch and not their own. Mature progenoid organs can be removed and new gene seed implants can be artificially cultured from them. This is crucial as it's the only way to create new implants, meaning a chapter relies on its existing space marines to produce new ones. Five years after implantation, the progenoid gland in the neck contains a mature gene seed and can be harvested, while the chest progenoid takes 10 years to mature. Harvesting usually takes place after a space marine's death, performed by an apothecary using a special tool called a reductor. The reductor is designed to extract both progenoid glands from a fallen space marine so that his gene seed can help replenish the chapter, offering a form of immortality to the space marines. And now we have the 19th and final implant, sort of. The black carapace, also known as the interface is one of the most crucial gene seed organ implants a space marine neophyte receives during his transformation from a normal adolescent into a superhuman being. This black organic fibrous material is implanted directly under the skin of the neophyte's torso. An apothecary then uses surgical tools to cut points throughout the carapace, allowing a space marine to directly connect his central nervous system with his power armor cybernetic systems. After a few hours, the material hardens and synthetic fiber bundles grow inward linking with the Space Marine's central nervous system. This connection is essential for a Space Marine to use his power armor to its full potential. While the armor itself can function without this implant, the Black Carapace enhances its efficiency significantly. For instance, the Sisters of Battle and some Inquisitors also wear power armor, but because their central nervous systems aren't directly linked to their armor's artificial intelligence, their armor is less effective in providing protection and maneuverability compared to that of a Space Marine. We've talked about the 19 primary implants, but we have to briefly talk about the next step in Space Marine evolution. Larger and more powerful than their predecessors are the Primaris Marines. On top of the standard gene seed implants, the new line of Primaris Space Marines gets three extra implants. These Primaris implants were introduced between Phase 3 and 4, called Primaris Alpha and Primaris Beta Phases, and can be added simultaneously, making the Primaris Marines even more formidable. The first implant, called the Steel Within, is the only cybernetic implant in a space marine. It reinforces their tendons and ligaments with durametallic coil cables that contract with incredible force. This not only boosts the space marine's strength beyond that of a regular space marine, but also provides an extra layer of internal defense. Then we have what's known as the Amplifier. This small, thumbnail-sized lobe is inserted into the brain's core. It secretes hormones that enhances the body's growth functions and intensifies its advanced systems. So basically it boosts the already existing Osmodola and Biscopia. And lastly, we have the Belisarian Furnace, also called the Revitalizer. This dormant organ is connected to both hearts. In times of extreme stress or trauma, it releases self-manufactured chemicals similar to combat stems, which also aid in regeneration. After activation though, the gland becomes dormant and needs time to recharge. And that concludes today's video. If you enjoyed the content, please leave a like and subscribe. I also want to hear your thoughts and ideas, so please leave a comment and let's get a discussion going. Once again, y'all are absolutely awesome. I'll see you in the next one. Peace.